It was estimated by researchers that before white men entered into North America, bald eagles numbered about 250 to 500,000 birds. In 1963, it was estimated that the numbers were below 500. So the alarm bell rang out and it prompted the development of the Endangered Species Act as we know it today. I became involved with the bald eagle uh, professionally in 1993, and at that time, the um, bald eagle populations were known to be improving, and since that time, the population has expanded geometrically. So that in 2007, it was officially removed from the list. Removing our national symbol from the endangered species list is not something that happens quickly or easily, but the bald eagle chipped in to help out. And now it's nesting in every state in the lower 48 states, and we're very proud to have been able to do that. I am confident about the continued recovery of the bald eagle. However, I also think we should continue to monitor the population to make sure that something doesn't catch us off guard. So I think we need to stay on top of it to make sure our population continues to have success. The Fish and Wildlife Service is scheduled to survey nesting bald eagles uh, once every five years as part of the post delisting monitoring plan. So a volunteer nest program is really a terrific component of that survey because this would be a way for citizens to do real measurable good and at the same time educate themselves more about bald eagles and get the public to buy in on maintaining bald eagle nesting and protection for the future. The eagles came on the radar with our first nest in Iowa in 1977, clear up in the northeast corner of the state, and that's what put it on the DNR's radar screen that we actually have an important thing happening here. It's the first time we've had a nest in the state since 1905, and so it was a really big deal. And then, of course, at that point, we thought, well, you know, how many nests can we have in the state? And the consensus was, well, we'll shoot for 10. If we can have 10 eagle nests by the year 2000, we'll really have done something. Well, little did we know that the eagles were going to really bounce back on their own. And uh, by 2000, we were up over 100 eagle nests in the state. That was when the buzz really started. We knew that they're on the comeback trail and we're doing pretty well. And with more support, they'd even do better. And if they had not been given the human protection and the human support, we wouldn't see near as many eagles right now. But originally, we didn't ever expect to have very many nests. So we thought the DNR could monitor all the nests ourselves and we soon found out that was impossible. So right now, we depend on citizen science, we depend on people, volunteers, to report things to us, and uh, the local community would take that on and be very proud that they have eagles in their community, and it's just built upon that. It's been a cascade effect, where more support for eagles means more eagles have a chance to survive in the wild. So right now, we have 30 times as many eagle nests as we ever thought we could possibly have in the state. And I don't know where the end's going to be, but the numbers are still increasing. The Eagle Nest program came into existence when the population was rebounding. We had too many nests to really keep track of just as wildlife professionals. So we came upon the idea that, of course, it would be a perfect fit for recruiting volunteers to help with monitoring the Eagle Nest. And the kind of volunteers that we have that are involved with the program care about wildlife, and they want to do something a little more involved. A volunteer for the Bald Eagle Nest Monitoring Program is required to have enough time to uh, visit a bald eagle nest um, at least three times during the nesting season, which can run over a four to five month period. And the patients as well to uh, go and, and sit at an eagle nest for a period of time and, and watch it. So we want them to go to the nest and actually spend some time getting to know what the nesting chronology of that pair is. Volunteers do get training. They learn about eagle biology and eagle nesting ecology and what to look for, what behaviors to look for, how to find a nest, how to characterize their habitat, and just to get people feeling a little bit more confident about what kind of data they're collecting. Also making sure they're very methodical, that they record the amount of time they're spending, that they make their visits during um, the different stages of nesting, and that that all is very important for the data to be usable. It's also important that volunteers have binoculars and a spotting scope is recommended. 
A volunteer should really, depending on where they are, contact their state wildlife agency and see, A, if there's any possibility of volunteers monitoring eagle nests, and B, kind of what the system is for um, getting a nest assignment. And while there's really three minimal visits of, you know, about half hour to an hour each, it's better if volunteers visit the nest a few more times. But altogether, it's maybe a 10-hour um, commitment a year if you're monitoring one nest. So it's not a huge time commitment. Visit one review. Locate the nest and confirm that it is occupied. Occupied or active nest. Adult bald eagles present, especially a pair, either in or in close vicinity of an eagle nest. If the nest cannot be found, search within a two mile radius of the area for an alternate nest site. Do not disturb the eagles, especially during the early stages of nesting. We have red-tailed hawks that nest on our farm for the last nine years. Well, I always carry my binoculars with me so I could watch them. And then I noticed these larger birds flying over our farm and here they were the eagles. And there was an opportunity to take a course to monitor eagles and be a volunteer. I try to be as quiet as I can when I come into the woods. January or February, I walk back and I check the nest and to see if it's the same size as it was last year. And then in February sometime I'll come back again. And a lot of times the nest looks bigger, so I know that they're preparing, the eagles are preparing to lay eggs. In it. And then I'll come back another time and I'll check to see if they're sitting on the nest and if they've laid eggs. And a lot of times if you see them sitting on the nest, they'll kind of do like a little shimmy. So then you know that they're sitting on eggs. There's paperwork that goes with it and you've got to have your heart into it because other people are depending on you to come back with information. There's not enough Department of Natural Resource people to do the work and so volunteers are very important. I knew there was a nest in my neighborhood so I volunteered. And I think it's really doing a good public service and then our younger people, the children, they'll be coming up next and so that maybe they'll become interested and they'll want to do this too. It's a lot of fun. Our volunteers are asked to go out initially in late winter and early spring for visit number one. Um, and in this visit, they're trying to determine whether the nest is occupied or not. And generally they're looking for uh, adults bringing in nesting material, um, adding nesting material to an existing nest. Once one of the birds really settles down into the nest, then that period lasts about 30 days. And the most important information is getting whether a bald eagle territory is active or occupied or not, whether there are young in the nest and how many young there are, and then how many of those young end up fledging. So what is the success of the nest? We ask folks to collect more specific information on how much time they spend at a nest site, um, some of the environmental variables, so whether it's sunny or what the temperature is, how windy it is, that can have some impacts on, you know, what they're seeing, and it helps just kind of verify the data a little bit. It's easy to do. It's fun if you like to be outdoors. I'm retired. I need something to do. Today we're just checking to see if the eagle is on the nest and incubating eggs. You try not to get too close to the nest. You don't want to disturb them any more than you have to. You observe with binoculars or perhaps a spotting scope. Try to camouflage yourself at least a little bit. I don't know if that makes much difference to the bird or not, but uh, <laughs> makes us feel better. You collect a little bit of data on the weather at the time you observe. Cloud cover, wind, fog, that kind of thing. The data for this visit, I will say that I have seen one eagle on the nest evidently incubating. If the mate had been here, I would record that also. And I think it signifies a new way of looking at nature and the world and being more caring about the natural resources that we have. Visit to review. Confirm whether the nest has young and, if so, record the number of chicks. If the young are not visible, watch for adult eagle behavior that suggests the presence of young. If the nest is obscured by leaves, search for a better vantage point. Nest inactivity is very important to report. The second visit's probably the hardest visit where you're trying to count the number of young. First of all, most trees have leafed out by this time, so some nests are gonna be more difficult to see and more hidden by leaf cover. We also ask volunteers to, to watch behavior, and sometimes they may report that the adult behavior suggests that there's young in the nest. Finding that nest site and, you know, Figuring out where it is and figuring out, again, is it going to be visible once the leaves come out or 
Um, what's the best place to watch it from? One of the important things that we touch on in the training is eagle nest watching etiquette. That's one of the most important things we can impress upon people um, because we certainly don't want our data collection to interfere with the birds nesting at all. Um, not to mention that there are federal laws that govern disturbing eagles. We've started to see eagles within the last five years and so we just enjoyed watching them and we're watching the numbers increase. We saw this ad in the local paper that the DNR was looking for volunteers and we thought, well, that would be something that we both could do together. So we uh, went to a workshop and this is our second year of doing it and we really enjoy it. After they assigned the nest to us, they gave us a map with coordinates and then we just started gazing the tree lines and we found it. There. There's a mature eagle right there. Yeah. And I would almost say he's that it has something, something in, its, in mouth. its mouth. I would yeah. guess that they have already hatched their eggs and he's taken something from the creek over here up oh. to feed them. Yes, wow. That would be the second stage to see if they have successfully hatched and they have young. You can't see them. It's just that we know they're feeding something. Mm -hmm. And as they get older, then we can see the young ones if they come up to the edge. We can't look in that nest. He went in the nest. And see actually how many eggs are in there. And that's through programs and workshops. We can learn some of those things where you make those better assumptions. They're pretty docile. We obviously know they can see us, but I think if, as long as you don't approach them too close or spend too much time, I think they, uh, they're pretty comfortable with people around. A lot of times eagles will let you know if they're disturbed. Sometimes it may just be a matter of the bird sitting up straighter in the nest and kind of just acting nervous. And then that will escalate into the bird coming off the nest, flying around in circles, a lot of times making their call, which uh, sounds a little bit like a seagull. That's obviously, they've been, they've been pretty disturbed at that point if they get up off the nest. Once a bird gets scared off a number of times, then they, they can't abandon the nest site. A lot of times we'll have volunteers go out, um, we'll provide them with a map or, or tell them where we know of a nest site and they'll go out and they, they won't be able to find the nest. The nesting location may not have been accurate, but also eagles frequently will have nests fall down and will build again and they generally build within a mile or two of their original nest site. If folks have determined in the first visit that they haven't seen activity, we still ask them to go back and do a second visit to the nest later in the year just to confirm that there was no activity in that first visit because it can be easy to miss if you don't spend enough time watching the nest. I remember as a child, I would draw birds. For some reason, birds were what I would draw. I'd look in the book and the encyclopedia and draw all different kinds of birds. The eagles, I just think they're fascinating. The bald eagle is just a beautiful bird and you see nests around and stuff and it's just really exciting. And I saw this class offered to learn how to monitor eagle nests and I thought that would be fascinating. It was a DNR program, so I went up, took the class, and while we were there that day, they took us around to see what an eagle nest looked like. And this one was a long ways away, but with binoculars, you could see the eagle in it, and I was, I was hooked. One thing I learned was the same location that I looked at the nest the first time might not be visible because of the leaves. So you try to find different locations that you can go to to monitor the nest, to take a look and see if there's any activity in it. They want to find out, did any eaglets hatch and are the parents feeding them? That's really what you look for. And you can tell from the angle of this nest you can't actually see in it. It is very hard from any vantage point to tell how many chicks are in the nest. So normally you're putting zero down. I mean, I have never put that I've seen chicks in the nest. I've seen adults feeding the chicks, but I've never been able to tell how many. So it's just something that really depends on, on where the nest is and where you're able to go. Visit three review. Confirm how many fledglings the nest has produced. Look for frequent wing flapping and exploration outside the nest to identify young near fledging. Review the nest monitoring reference guide for additional methods to age young getting close to fledging. Consider multiple visits to the nest site to accurately count fledglings. 
The third visit is to determine how many of the young that are in the nest have successfully fledged from the nest. Here in Iowa, it's in June, so it's usually early summer. The young at that point will be adult size. A lot of times they will be uh, doing a lot of wing flapping. They'll be venturing out, becoming more adventurous. So if they see all of those things and it's during the prescribed fledging period, they can count the number of birds that are there as fledglings. We said, yes, we'd love to have a nest to watch. That we feel like we feel like there are eagles and it's our nest. It's fun to watch them grow, just like it's fun to watch your kids grow and see what happens with them. Up until this this trip, we've known something was in the nest because of the behavior of the adults, but we couldn't see in the nest. So now today is the first time that we've actually seen any sign of eaglets. And right now there's um, uh, one fuzzy gray head uh, standing there next to one of the adults. But to actually see where they live and where they care for their young and to kind of be part of supporting their comeback from near extinction, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. In the winter of last year, I got an email about the Eagle Monitoring Project and I thought, wow, I want to do that. So we signed up. Stage three is to see how many fledge. Ours were out of the nest. They're kind of trying their wings out on the limbs. We're lucky in that we have the DNR, we have the eagle experts in Decora who have been doing this for a long time. And we also monitor their nest because they yeah. have a, a, an eagle cam. And we kind of think, well, if their eaglets yeah. are at this stage, then, then maybe, maybe ours we are, better pay more attention yeah. to ours. When we see them start getting to the point where we think they might fledge, then we'll, we'll come out more often here. I kind of wish the citizen scientist aspect of it had existed a long time ago. And part of the reason they told us we're doing this, and as you do it over time, is if they start to see less eagles, less hatchlings, less fledging, then they can look to the environment to see what's changed. Volunteers we need at least a pair of binoculars. A spotting scope is recommended. We ask them to collect information on the adult behavior, if they're incubating, if they seem to be hunkered down in the nest, and that's most of what they're collecting in that first visit out to the nest. In the second visit, they're trying to get a count of the number of young. And then in the final visit to the nest, they're mostly trying to count the number of fledglings. Volunteers have been really helping the wildlife profession for many years collect credible data. While eagles have rebounded quite a bit, you know, they're still vulnerable, there's still concerns, and they're an important species to keep an eye on. And so the information we're collecting right now, I feel really, really confident about is gonna give us our first heads up if there's something wrong or if there's something going on with the population. The bald eagle has shown us that we have the ability to bring back species, but there are many species that aren't doing well. Only a third of our songbirds are declining right now. But if we can protect eagles, we should be able to protect a lot of other species that depend on our rivers and streams and, and lakes as well. If we can develop an ecological conscience where everybody understands the value of all the native animals that exist here and trying to preserve them for future generations, then we have a, a lot better chance of the, these species doing well into the future. I'm always hopeful. <laughs> because Iowa has such productive land, I think it's just a matter of shifting our attitude. We decide we want to protect and bring back those 30-some percent of our species that are declining. I, we can do that. And the bald eagle is a good example of how people work together to try to bring back a species and, and, and have been very successful at it.